is hardly inexpensive but in compensation it's a satisfyingly desirable take on small SUV motoring especially in this revised form. The design is individual, the cabin feels special and it's well equipped. Plus the combustion engines are willing and economical and there's the option of full electric technology if you want it. This is the car tasked with really moving the DS brand forward. interesting stat. It won't be long before SUVs account for a quarter of all car sales and premium brands account for 11% of all worldwide car production but 37% of automotive segment profits which explains why the Stellantis Group conglomerate needs the DS brand and why back in 2018 the DS brand needed to launch its first bespoke designed small SUV, the DS3 Crossback. The Crossback name was there to differentiate the car from the older Citroen-derived DS3 small hatch that the brand had previously been selling. But of course, that is long forgotten now. So in its facelifted form that we're looking at here, this car is merely called the DS3. There's more to the updates here than merely a change of name. Of course, there's a smarter look, a bit more interior luxury, and a useful upgrade for the E-Tense EV version that we're trying here. As before, the DS3 in all its forms shares most of its engineering with new generation versions of familiar Stellantis Group Superminis like Peugeot's 208 and Vauxhall's Corsa, but packages it all up with a stylized expression of Gallic Savoir Faire. Buyers are promised distinctive looks, jewel-like detailing and cutting-edge technology. Those who continue to want this model with a combustion engine will find that the available 1.2 litre unit remains amongst the most efficient on the market. And whatever your powertrain preference, you'll find that your DS3 can be ordered with some genuinely individual trimming choices and they should make your car really stand out. Now DS calls it haute couture and hopes that potential buyers will find this little super mini based SUV refreshingly different. Will they though? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find that out. You'll want to know about the engineering changes made here. Well, the recipe isn't much different. Uh, the combustion range has been slimmed down. Uh, there are no diesels anymore, and DS isn't now offering the top 155 horsepower petrol variant. And the all-electric DS3 E-Tense that we're trying here gets a completely new electric motor that's assembled in Tremory Metz, a revised reduction gear setup that's produced in Valenciennes, and a new 54 kilowatt hour battery uh, that's assembled in Poissy for increases in power and range. As before, in driving this smallest DS model, you sense that the certainty that the Gallic Mark has in terms of uh, how its products should look and feel isn't really carried through to the way that they ride and handle. Uh, how should a modern DS uh, like this one feel to drive? Well, the classic 60s model, of course, was soft and floaty, but that car was a Citroen, and that was a brand who rather owned that approach. Uh, but nor is it appropriate for DS to merely copy obvious German rivals. Audi, which has an obsession with big wheels and sportiness, and Mini, which wants to make everything cart-like, whether it ought to be or not. The compromise solution that this scenario has almost inevitably led to uh, was somewhat disguised with the brand's first standalone product, uh, the larger DS7. Uh, now that was with the option of a clever active suspension system. Without fancy electronics of that sort though, uh, this DS3 Crossback has to revert to its maker's undecided blend of virtues, which leave you uh, thinking it's prioritized sportiness one minute and supple luxury the next. Fortunately for DS though, virtually all small SUVs tend to share that kind of indecision uh, to the point where it's quite possible for us to say that we're struggling to think of one that rides, steers or handles much better than this one. And that's not necessarily a compliment, uh, it's rather more of an indication of the prevailing culture in this segment of the market. 
be more specific. The steering's pleasingly accurate, but it could do uh, with a little bit more feel for the times when you're pushing on through those tighter bends. Uh, body roll is well controlled for such a relatively high-sided small car, but the ride can be jerky and it's quickly upset by deeper potholes and sharper speed humps, although it does become rather more compliant at highway speeds. Uh, if you've chosen a petrol model, uh, then you'll find that the six-speed manual gearbox is quite slick too, although, as before, uh, you can only have that with the entry-level 100 horsepower engine. Uh, that's the usual Stellantis Group 3-cylinder 1.2-litre offering. As ever, this PureTech engine isn't particularly keen to rev, but it does have an eager note and it has lots of low down boost as you accelerate to 62 miles an hour in 11.4 seconds on the way to 112 mph. The majority of DS3 sales, though, are going to be focused around the PureTech 130 petrol version. Uh, now, that's available only with an 8-speed automatic gearbox. Uh, now, Stellantis sources that from specialist maker ASIM. Uh, as part of that transmission package, uh, you'll also get steering wheel paddle shifters and a set of selectable driving modes. Uh, these are Eco, Normal and Sport, the latter being the one that you'll need if you want to replicate the claimed 9.2 second 0 to 62 miles an hour sprint time, and that's achieved en route to 124 mph. You can, of course, forget that kind of top-end velocity in the final DS3 model, the fully electric E-Tense variant, which, as we mentioned earlier on, is the one that we've chosen to test here. Uh, its inclusion in the lineup uh, that was made possible thanks to the fact that the CMP platform, which this car sits on, has rather cleverly been engineered to accept both conventional and full battery powertrains. Uh, the full battery element sets this electric model apart from the brand's other DS4 and DS7 E-Tense branded models, which rather confusingly aren't EVs uh, but are plug-in hybrids. Customers of this DS3 E-Tense will, the company thinks, be people who want to see the back of fossil fuel entirely, uh, but that laudable determination was uh, sorely tested by the original Crossback E-Tense version of this model. In its earliest 50 kilowatt hour form, it was only WLTP rated to go 200 miles between charges, and in reality it often didn't achieve much more than two thirds of that figure, unless you drove it in a very restrained way indeed. The EV powertrain updates we described at the beginning have made a big difference here though, uh, most notably the larger 54 kilowatt hour battery, 50.8 kilowatt hours usable, uh, that's now WLTP rated at 250 miles, that's much more light like it. But it's still a slug off the current class leader, that's Hyundai's Kona Electric, which in bigger battery form manages 319 miles. As before, you can manage range via two driver-activated energy recovery settings, normal and brake. Also as before, the DS3 e tense offers three main selectable driving modes, Eco, Normal and Sport, uh, the last of which delivers the powertrain's maximum 260 newton meters to the tarmac, uh, the instant that the wheels begin to turn. That pulling power stat is unchanged, which is why, uh, despite the new electric motor's increase in power from 132 to 155 horsepower, uh, the rest of 62 miles an hour time for this variant remains pegged at 8.7 seconds on the way to 112 miles an hour. As usual with an EV, uh, most of the available urgency is offered below 30 miles an hour, and that's crested in just three seconds. This EV, like the combustion-engined version of this car, is of course front-driven to suit the mood for a segment which uh, generally has little time for the inefficient running costs which come with all-wheel traction. Uh, that doesn't stop most other brands in this sector pretending that their little SUVs are somehow still Serengeti adventurers though. Refreshingly, DS doesn't bother with any of that and fully acknowledges this car's remit for the urban jungle and has designed it to suit with an appropriate level of uh, savoir faire. As is the current trend, whatever your powertrain choice, uh, there's plenty of semi-autonomous driving technology on offer, most of it unfortunately optional. Uh, the DS Drive Assist package combines active cruise control and lane keeping assist in a form that sees the vehicle managing both steering and speed. In summary, as ever, this DS3 won't be for everyone, but then it wouldn't be as appealing as it is 
if it was. Uh, the DS brand is all about a different spirit, a different way to go. And whatever you think about this car, one thing is really clear, it does deliver on that promise. Styling is an emotive subject, but most will probably agree that this car still offers quite an interesting take on B-segment super mini base design. Uh, the dimensions haven't changed, so it's 4.18 meters long, uh, 1.79 meters wide, and 1.53 meters high. And that means it sits amongst the smaller contenders in this segment. The visual changes to this model are quickly covered. Uh, revised headlamps, now of the LED variety across the range. They flank a restyled grille, which is wider and enhanced with gloss black or chromed diamond tips, depending on the model. Uh, the identifying DS wings have been tweaked to subtly join the grille and the headlamps. Uh, there's a new spoiler and the bonnet gains a Clou de Paris embossed insert. Plus, as before, there are these fang-shaped uh, vertical daytime running light strips on each side. So if you like your automotive jewellery, you'll love this. Uh, there's more willful individuality from a profile perspective. Now you can't miss the one distinctive styling theme carried over from the old pre-2019 era DS3 hatch, this shark fin feature which uh, flows up into the B-pillar. It's a stylized touch that seems almost as arbitrary as the panel creasing, a waist level swage line that flows from the tail light into the rear door and then abruptly disappears, and a tick shaped crease uh, that flows across both doors but seems to have no defined stylistic purpose. There are invisible exterior window seals and big wheels of course to suit the current fashion. Here redesigned 17 inch rims fitted to base trim and as in this case 18 inches further up the range. Our favourite perspective though is here at the rear where the broad powerful shoulders that position this car squarely on the road are set off by an LED light signature that spans the entire body width. Uh, it's now emphasised by a, a lacquered black strip that features polished stainless steel DS Automobiles badging. Below each lamp is a slash style vent that uh, draws the eye down into the stylized bumper. As usual, of course, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. As before, this DS3 sits on the Stellantis Group's CMP platform. Uh, that's the same one that's used for segment rival cousins like the Peugeot 2008 and the Vauxhall Mocha. It was a platform that was formatted for the use of both fully electrified and combustion engine power. Time to take a look inside. Now, before we do, here's a nice touch. Now, the way that this flush fitting door handle springs out to meet the car's key holder once he or she gets within one and a half meters of the car. That's if, as here, your DS3 has the brand's proximity keyless entry and start setup fitted. Nothing's very different inside, which means that if you haven't tried the earlier version of this DS3 design, it'll be like nothing you've ever experienced before. Now, if diamonds are a girl's best friend, as Marilyn Monroe once assured us, then ladies are gonna absolutely love this car's cabin here because that is a theme which reoccurs almost everywhere. Um, most of the infotainment and the ventilation controls are clustered within uh, seven intersecting diamonds, and you'll also find the same shaping on the engine start button, uh, in the switch gear by the gear stick, uh, in the lower steering wheel spoke, uh, the instrument cluster design, and also on the corner air vents, which uh, rather unusually here, have been moved out into the doors. Now, whether that approach is ergonomically sensible is something that we could uh, debate at length, but it certainly looks distinctive. Of course, if you favor Teutonic simplicity and clarity of form, you won't like this at all. What's served up here is a glorious antidote to all that, uh, a celebration, uh, the DS designers hope, of everything which is cutting edge in French fashion. So there's a cascade of angled Art Deco switches either side of the gear stick here and uh, for the upper part of the dashboard at least there's the kind of uh, exquisite trimming that you simply wouldn't expect to find at this price point. Plus the steering wheel features classy knurled barrel like selector dials. It's all very nice indeed although with this revised model uh, a number of 
fiddly dash mounted touch sensitive buttons do return to the fascia. Uh, the exact style of cabin ambiance uh, rather depends on the trim package that you've chosen. Uh, all of them are quite nice uh, with an Alcantara theme at the foot of the range and black basalt leather on plusher variants. Now that is further embellished uh, by the brand's signature watch strap quilted finishing on this top opera version. You can't help suspecting that the infotainment screen would have been diamond shaped too had it not been necessary to source this from the Stellantis Group parts bin. Now for this revised model uh, DS has thankfully dispensed with the previous smaller 7 inch version of this central monitor. So all versions now have the 10.3 inch central display that we have here which uh, provided you avoid entry level trim will be fitted out with 3D connected navigation and voice control. Uh, in this revised model this display gets a redesigned gloss black surround and all variants get it with the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring functionality. Uh, plus there's the option to upgrade this monitor with a thumping 12 speaker 515 watt bespoke focal electra hi-fi on request. Unfortunately you do still have to use this monitor to access the climate functions and there's no useful rotary lower controller to operate this whole infotainment setup uh, as you would get in say a rival Mazda CX-30. But the DS designers have tried to compensate by adding in uh, the diamond shaped shortcut mid-level fascia buttons we mentioned earlier. Unfortunately they're of the touch sensitive sort and they're not especially responsive and that can make them rather awkward to use without uh, taking your eyes off the road. Anything that isn't included here and a lot that is can also be found on the smart 7 inch virtual instrument screen you view through this uh, restyled thicker leather bound three spoke steering wheel which now gains gear shift paddles on the auto models. This display is a DS themed version of a setup that you get in comparably priced but larger Stellantis Group SUV models like the Peugeot 2008 and the Vauxhall Mocha that we mentioned earlier on and as with those cars it's a system which is configurable in a number of ways uh, to show the information that's most useful to you. Uh, a dials option shows engine temperature and a digital speedo. Uh, the driving option adds safety features and navigation brings 3D mapping directly into your line of sight. Uh, plus there are a couple of extra personal options which can be customized to prioritize things like uh, trip computer readouts and radio settings. Ergonomic oversights are remarkably few considering the stylized eccentricity on display here. The seats are pleasingly supportive thanks to the use of special bi-density foam. And although the driving position isn't especially commanding, your view frontwards is fine, even though the A-pillars have to be wide enough to uh, incorporate some audio speakers. Uh, the sloping roof line, uh, that does compromise your view rearwards a bit though, so it's really just as well that rear parking sensors are standard fit with this car. Uh, while we're grousing a bit, we'll also tell you that uh, cheaper plastics appear in quantity further down the dash. Uh, the foot wells are rather small and that combined with the width of the central column uh, means that space for your left leg is rather restricted. And uh, also that it's annoying that the central window lift switches are located so close to the all too similar electronic parking brake switch. There are a few issues with cabin storage too. Uh, before fussing about with diamond decor, we'd prefer that the DS designers concentrated on finding a way of engineering right-hand drive models so that the majority of space in the glove box isn't taken up with a fuse box, which once again on a French brand Stellantis Group model has happened here. Um, in compensation, uh, there is a deep storage box here between the seats uh, with a lift out coin tray, but for some absolutely unfathomable reason, the 12 volt and USB ports which go with this stowage area have been mounted on the outside of the bin, uh, where they not only look really unsightly, but they leave you having to charge your handset in front of prying eyes. 
unless you object to the lack of an overhead sunglasses compartment, uh, there's not much else to complain about though when it comes to cabin practicality. There are uh, deep door pockets, uh, twin cup holders lie uh, behind the gear lever here, and there are ticket clips on the sun visors. Uh, plus, this tray in front of the gear stick can accommodate an optional wireless phone charger. Time to take a seat in the rear, which is the point at which you might be reminded that the same kind of money could almost have bought you a medium-sized Qashqai class SUV from the next segment up, albeit one with a volume-branded badge. And it's also worth pointing out that the outlay here could also have bought you a larger super mini sector SUV. Almost all this DS model's B segment uh, crossover rivals are longer than the 4,118 millimeter body length on offer here. And the premium models DS are primarily targeting quite a lot bigger. The Audi Q2 is 90 millimeters longer. The Honda HRV is a substantial 222 millimeters longer. Ultimately, what it boils down to is that you won't be buying this DS3 if rear seat space is a priority, but you're going to want the back seat to at least be adequate for a couple of kids or a pair of adults at a pinch. So, is it? Pretty much, yes. Uh, legroom's not bad at all, helped by the scalloped seat backs and the way that you can uh, slide your brogues really easily beneath the chair in front. Uh, thanks to the sloping roof line, headspace isn't quite as good, but much more of an issue is the way that your side view out is so restricted by that shark fin side pillar design we referenced earlier on. Uh, plus, the window level is rather high. If you have potentially claustrophobic kids, uh, we'd really advise that you should take them on the test drive to make sure that uh, they'll be happy back here. On the plus side, the transmission tunnel isn't too high and there's a neat netted storage area just above that, although there's no connectivity port. Uh, LED lights sit over the door apertures and there are decently sized bottle holders in the doors themselves. Unfortunately, as with other Stellantis Group models in this class, the seat back headrests dig uncomfortably into your back unless you raise them up each time you take a seat and you don't get the sliding seat base or the reclining seat back options that do feature on some cars in this class, nor is there a central armrest. Uh, in compensation though, uh, the standard of trim and finishing is, as it is in the front, a class above what you'd find in most B-segment SUVs. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, given the fairly compact size of this car, you won't be expecting the trunk area to be huge, and sure enough, the 350 litre capacity is 55 litres down on an Audi Q2, but it's 31 litres up uh, on the Honda HRV and 18 litres bigger than a Lexus LBX. There's no extra room underneath the floor, although unlike this e tense model, the combustion versions do include a space saver spare wheel that you have to do without on most class rivals. Another plus is the low loading lip, so lugging heavy items in and out will be easy. Uh, there's no adjustable height boot floor, and perhaps a little surprisingly, uh, DS has forgotten to include bag hooks, and there are no tie-down points for the rear section of the boot. Would have been nice to have seen a 40-20-40 rear seat back split, or at least provision uh, for a ski hatch. Unfortunately, the DS has neither, so if you need to take longer items, you're gonna to have to push forward this 60-40 split backrest, at which point 1,050 liters of space is revealed. Expect DS3 pricing as before to start from just under £26,000 and to range up to just over £40,000. There's thankfully a simplified trim range starting with Performance Line and Performance Line Plus levels, then progressing through to mid-range Rivoli and then on to Top Opera, which is the trim level we have here. Now the base PureTech 100 horsepower petrol manual gearbox combination that's only available with base performance line trim. Uh, the other two drivetrain options, uh, the PureTech 130 automatic and this all-electric e variant come with all the trim levels. 
There is obviously a lot of competition in the small SUV segment, not least from the Stellantis Group models that share this one's engineering, uh, the Vauxhall Mokka, uh, the Peugeot E2008 and the Jeep Avenger. Now, a Mokka costs fractionally less, a 2008 retails at much the same sort of figures and the Avenger, which is a closer fit for a likely DS3 buyer, is a few thousand more. Uh, you would save a little over this DS by opting for a less aspirational segment rival, a Ford Puma, a Mazda CX-30, or a Volkswagen T-Cross, they're all around a thousand pounds less. A Suzuki Vitara, a Volkswagen Taigo, or a Toyota Yaris Cross, they're about two thousand pounds less. Uh, a Renault Capture, or a Skoda Kamiq, about three thousand pounds less. And a Nissan Duke, a Citroen C3 Aircross, or a Seat Arona, around four thousand pounds less. Think a uh, £5,000 saving if you're considering a Kia Stonic or a Sangyong Tivoli, and as much as £8,000 less if your comparison point is an MG ZS. We'd suggest, though, that segment rivals which are more in tune with this DS3's upmarket aspirations would be cars like the Audi Q2 or two full hybrids, the Honda HRV and the Lexus LBX. For either of these, you're most likely looking at spending £30,000 upwards if you want a similar spec to that offered by this DS. In short then, uh, yes, you can save money over a DS3 with a combustion or EV-powered small SUV of this type, but you'll probably have to sacrifice some of your premium aspirations to do that. Viewed in that light, you can see how this car might appeal to the right kind of buyer. And if you happen to be that person, then you're going to want to know exactly how generous this DS brand is when it comes to standard specification. So let's take a little look at that now. Previously, a few DS3s were chosen with entry-level trim, but that might change now because the range starting point is the slightly more generously embellished performance line spec. Now that's identifiable by 17 inch wheels. It also gets dark tinted rear windows, uh, power folding, electrochrome mirrors, an acoustic windscreen, auto headlights, an alarm, rear parking sensors, cruise control with a speed limiter, and on the combustion model, the space saver spare wheel that many rivals make you do without. Uh, there's also a full package of camera driven safety kit. And we'll come onto that in just a moment. Inside, performance line spec now gets you a larger 10.3 inch central touchscreen. Uh, that's your access point to an eight speaker DAB audio setup, plus Bluetooth and mirror screen, smartphone mirroring, and that incorporates the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. Uh, there's also a seven inch digital instrument cluster. Uh, there's manual air conditioning, height adjustable front seats, and a black Alcantara interior trimming package, and that's for the upholstery and for the cabin decor. Plus you get uh, rear seat back pockets and chromed door entry sills, along with the DS brand's supportive premium seat. That has special comfort foam and it positions you in front of a black perforated leather steering wheel with contrast stitching. As before, all DS3 models come with a freely downloadable My DS app. Amongst other things, this allows you to monitor and record fuel consumption and even find your car if you've forgotten where you parked it. Uh, there are also neat incorporated only you features, which include DS assistance, and this looks after you in the event of an accident or a breakdown. DS Valet, which you can use to have your car collected for servicing. Uh, DS Rent, which allows you to test drive another DS model. And DS Club Privilege, and this gives you special privileged DS ownership opportunities, uh, access to exhibitions, private DS events, and so on. Want to stretch further up the range? Well, if so, as we said earlier, your next stop on the DS3 ladder is Performance Line Plus trim, which now gets extra equipment like a central armrest, uh, mats and lighting for the sun visors and the footwells. A Performance Line Plus DS3 is marked out by larger 18-inch wheels and 3D LED rear lights. Plus, it also gets keyless entry, acoustic rear windows, aluminium sports pedals, an extra front USB port, a frameless electrochrome rear view mirror, and the brand's DS Iris system for the central dash touchscreen. That adds 3D connected navigation and voice control. Uh, from this level in the range upwards, you also get the brand's advanced 
traction control system and that gives you some specific drive settings for mud, sand and snow. If you want more uh, than mid-range Rivoli trim beckons, that's marked out by 18-inch Nice diamond cut alloy wheels and a diamond design front grille with extra chrome extended to the DS wings trimming strips which extend from it. Uh, the other key inclusion at Rivoli level is the brand's plush looking basalt black Mistral leather interior package. Uh, if you can stretch further up the line to this top opera trim, then that upholstery package would get upgraded with the brand's signature watch strap quilted finish. Uh, opera spec also adds a head up display, a reversing camera, front parking sensors, a wireless phone charging mat, uh, power operated heated and massaging front seats, and an extended package of camera safety kit. Uh, we're gonna get onto that in a moment. Enough with standard features, what about the options? Well, there are a few key things here. Uh, bear in mind that unless you want your car finished in Bianca white, you'll need to be paying your dealer extra for your choice of paint shade. Now we've got one of the two new pearlescent colors, uh, three layered Diva Red here. Uh, there are a couple of roof color options too. There's Perla Nera Black and Carrot Gray. Uh, with the two performance line trim grades, uh, there are various 17 and 18 inch wheel upgrade options as well. Uh, now, if you happen to have stuck with the base performance line trim instead, uh, you can add in as individual extras most of the niceties which are fitted further up the range. I'm talking about things like 3D connected navigation, uh, the head up display, the keyless entry, the phone charging mat, uh, the advanced traction control system, and so on. If, as is more likely, you've avoided base trim, uh, then your dealer is gonna suggest you upgrade your DS3 with features like the uh, intelligent DS Matrix LED Division headlights and the brand's very desirable 12 speaker 515 watt focal electric hi fi audio system upgrade. On to safety, uh, the DS brand doesn't want to be seen as lagging behind when it comes to that uh, camera driven safety provision. So, as before, all DS3 models come with the company's safety pack, and that'll give you four main features which use a multifunctional camera and radar package. Uh, the main one, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, uh, an active safety brake system which detects hazards ahead and which will apply the brakes if the driver doesn't react, although it only works up to 52 miles an hour. Uh, there's also a lane departure warning system. Now that'll alert you if you drift out of your lane on the highway. And lane keeping assist, uh, that's a setup which in highway motoring will apply some gentle steering assistance to keep the car exactly where it ought to be in its designated lane. Uh, there's also speed limit recognition. Uh, now obviously that pictures speed limit signs and then displays them on the dash. Uh, this runs an intelligent speed adaptation system, which if that's activated, uh, will automatically regulate your speed so you never exceed a posted limit. In addition, as you'd expect, there are all the usual things, twin front side and curtain airbags, ISOFIX child seat fastenings, and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction, and stability control. Uh, plus you get Hill Start Assist and the brand's DS Connect box package, which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact location if the airbags go off. If you want to go further with camera driven safety kit, you'll need to spend a bit more, unless of course you've stretched to this top opera trim, which has it all. Otherwise you could add in a city pack, which gives you blind spot detection, along with front parking sensors and also a reversing camera. But ideally you'll find the 1450 pounds extra that DS wants for the advanced safety pack, which is only offered with automatic transmission. Uh, this adds to the city pack features with high beam assist, a lane keeping assist setup, including road edge recognition and extended capability for both the traffic sign recognition and the active safety brake system, uh, which will, in this form, also work at night and specifically pick up pedestrians and cyclists. The key advanced safety pack feature, though, is the brand's DS Drive Assist system, and this represents the mark's first tentative steps towards autonomous driving. And when this is activated, uh, although you always have to keep uh, your hands on the steering wheel, your DS3 will essentially be driving itself. 
Now that's thanks to the way that a stop and go function works as part of the active cruise control uh, with the whole thing functioning in tandem with that lane keeping assist setup. Now using this technology, uh, your distance to the vehicle in front will uh, automatically be adapted. Uh, your DS will, if necessary, automatically bring itself to a halt and then move itself off again and the car will follow the traffic flow independently, uh, always positioning itself in the centre of the road. Now thanks to all this, uh, the DS Drive Assist setup works as effectively in stop-start urban traffic as it does on highway journeys. In most respects, this car does its best to try to disguise its shared Stellantis Group underpinnings, but uh, when it comes to the running cost efficiency, uh, there's a reason for this DS3 to proudly parade its Peugeot Citroen derived engines and its stiff, sophisticated CMP chassis platform. Uh, the PureTech combustion petrol variants have a feather like curb weight of under 1.2 tonnes, uh, and that really is incredible for any kind of SUV. Uh, arguably, this the model's closest rival, the Audi Q2, is 80 kilos heavier in comparable form, while something like the Lexus LBX is a full 110 kilos heavier. That's like carrying around uh, the combined weight of an adult and a small child extra. Combine that with a superbly efficient engine design and there should be the recipe for a very competitive set of fuel economy and CO2 stats. Even though at the time this improved model's launch and at the time of our test, uh, DS hadn't yet got around to adding the Stellantis Group's latest mild hybrid electrified technology into the combustion versions of this car. So let's get to the exact uh, WLTP rated figures that the DS3's various engines can produce. The base PureTech 100 petrol manual derivative delivers up to 49.6 miles per gallon and up to 128 grams per kilometre of CO2. For the automatic PureTech 130 the figures are up to uh, 47.1 mpg and 135 grams per kilometre. Those figures are actually pretty close to those you'll get from Honda's full hybrid HRV, which is quite an achievement. Uh, you can see why the brand didn't think that there was any point in persisting with a diesel derivative. If you want to do better in a DS3, you'll need to be looking at the all-electric E-Tense version that we've been trying here, which, as we told you earlier on in our driving section, uses a new 54 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery, 50.8 uh, kilowatt hours of that is usable, and that can be recharged to 80% of its capacity in just 30 minutes from the right DC rapid charging point. Uh, there's now an 11 kilowatt onboard charger and a 100 kilowatt public fast charging point will perform a full charge in 90 minutes. An 11 kilowatt wall box will recharge the car in five hours. It will take uh, seven and a half hours from a seven kilowatt wall box. As usual with EVs, you can preset charging times and you can precondition cabin temperature too via a dedicated app. Uh, now, charging is one of the ownership areas that are covered by the energy section of this E-Tense model's central screen. Uh, the others are statistics, which covers uh, graphical charge consumption and energy flow. Uh, now that that shows you the powertrain working in real time. With a fully replenished battery, up to 250 miles of WLTP rated driving range is possible, although in our experience around 220 miles is rather more realistic. Uh, the improved range is partly due to the efficiency of this updated model's improved electric motor, uh, plus the powertrain's ability to recover energy. The battery should record figures uh, which are rather closer to its claims this time around, thanks to thermal control through liquid circulation and improved energy density. To maximise driving range in a DS3 E-Tense, you'll have to regularly engage the most frugal Eco Drive mode and make full use of the two provided driver-activated energy recovery settings, normal and brake. Adding to efficiency is thermal preconditioning and a bit of extra aerodynamic efficiency too. The brand has lowered ground clearance by 10 millimetres as part of this update. Plus the heat pump that you'd have to pay extra for on some rival models, uh, it's fitted as standard here. Uh, that's a feature that maximises driving range uh, from the battery in really cold conditions.
What else do you need to know? Uh, let's start with maintenance. Uh, service intervals vary across the range. Uh, they're every year or every 16,000 miles with the base PureTech 100 model, uh, every year or 12,500 miles with the PureTech 130. This E-Tense variant needs an initial garage visit at one year and 8,000 miles, uh, then a scheduled service at two years or 16,000 mile intervals thereafter. Residual value is going to be key to whole life running costs, of course. Uh, these are still difficult to accurately predict from what is still a relatively new brand, uh, but this car's comparative rarity will certainly help. Uh, DS reckons that after three years and 60,000 miles, this model's predicted value will be 43%, and that's not too far off that of an Audi Q2. You might expect a newly established brand to make an extra effort with warranty provision, uh, but there's only the usual unremarkable three-year 60,000 mile package. The electric e uh, gets a separate eight-year 100,000 mile warranty for the electrical powertrain. Uh, finally, let's give you an idea of what you'll be looking at uh, when it comes around to insurance groupings. Uh, now, the PureTech 100, uh, that's a petrol manual model, that's rated at Group 15E. Uh, the PureTech 130 Auto, that's Group 20E or 21E. Uh, the E-Tense EV, that's rated at 29A, 30A or 31A, depending on spec. The BIK tax rating uh, on the base PureTech 100 model is 30% and you'll pay £210 for the first year road tax. It's 32% for the PureTech 130 and £255 for that first year road tax there. It's just 2% BIK and uh, nothing in road tax for the first year in the e -tense. In a DS3 e 2 you won't have to pay the London congestion charge until 2025. It takes a lot to create a premium brand. More than currently separates a DS product from the Citroen, Peugeot and Vauxhall models whose engineering it shares, well, you be the judge of that. We'll simply say that this is a genuinely different option in a crowded class. It's individualistic, it's charismatic and in its own way, it's quite unique. As this DS3 has to be to justify the prices being asked. Now apparently you'll be a target buyer if you're someone who's in tune with the latest trends, appreciates luxury and likes to express their unique personality. Well that sounds good in the brochure but how will that reality translate in the showroom given that most buyers these days seem to associate a premium feel with Teutonic design? Is there room for a fresh approach here? While well, other fledgling premium brands have struggled to deliver this but we think the prospects for DS maybe rather better. Competitor nameplates have the market recognition that DS is still seeking, but the company ought to find more of it courtesy of this car, especially in this improved form. It has a special feeling lacking from most similarly priced rivals, and the E-Tense electrified technology is ahead of some of them too. It isn't the most practical option in terms of rear seat room or boot space. Uh, the ride can be a bit jerky and not everyone is going to like the looks. But there are some nice equipment touches, spec levels are quite generous and the combustion engines are superbly efficient. And in summary, well, as we said when we were reviewing the larger DS7, we like this car most because it feels special or at least it will for the right kind of buyer. That customer will love the painstaking attention that's been paid to almost every detail of this design. Again, it's certainly true that in some respects the execution here isn't perfect, but there's something rather soulless and clinical, isn't there, about perfection? Ultimately, this car, like its brand, is aspirational. If you are too, and you're shopping in this segment, and you're looking for something just a little bit different, we think there's just a chance you might like it very much indeed.